It's 4 a.m. Our plan for the first night was to stay at Mulberry Bend State Wildlife Management Area in Vermilion, South Dakota after a short visit with my son. We reached the bridge to Nebraska across the Missouri River at 5.18 p.m. after stopping at the lookout to use the facilities and enjoy the view. We traveled to our camping spot where we set up for the night. Day two's destination was near Dodge City, Kansas. When we left our site at 8.33 a.m., it was 28 degrees Celsius. We stayed off the interstate, taking Highway 87 most of the way to Dodge City. This allowed me more opportunities to stop with Chance. It also gave me more sightseeing opportunities. We saw the sign for the smallest city hall in the world. And we were also on the Lewis and Clark Trail. The Mulberry Creek area is part of that trail. We stopped in Concordia, Kansas, where Chance was allowed inside McDonald's as a service dog. For that, we are eternally grateful as it was already 42 degrees Celsius by that time. This would be millet, I think. Correct me if I'm wrong. The other thing is, um, we're still in Kansas, but just up the road there, uh, we turned around to come back to this spot. Um, we spied our first uh, oil well. Our resting place for the night was Ford Lake near Dodge City, Kansas. There we found cement picnic tables, shelters to sit under if it rained, two docks, 
and primitive bathrooms. At Ford Lake, there are about 10 camping sites in total. There is no cell service at the lake, but I do highly recommend you check this out. On the other side of the lake, there is a tunnel to explore near a boys camp. We were gifted with an amazing sunrise. We talked to a fisherman named Jason at the site before getting on the road again. Dodge City is all about cows, airplanes, and wind energy. Our destination for the third day is Trammell Lake in Sweetwater, Texas.
Canadian Texas. I was trying to find a spot to park and get the lake for a little bit. We came across this rest stop, so let's take a look. On our way, we found the Canadian River Wagon Bridge in Canadian Texas. The steel bridge was built in 1916 to help people travel across the river at that time. Now it is the focal point for a scenic hike and bike trail. Lake, south of Sweetwater Lake. It is 
from Stripes here because they need $4 cash. Your Stripes is the ah, Bienvenido a Mexico. So that was the fare for the toll. It's $4 to get across the bridge. You can go around, but it was much longer. In 300 meters, turn right. Here is the Rio Grande. Bienvenido a Mexico. All right. Here we go. We are officially in Mexico. We crossed the border. Um, it's 2.06, so it did take about an hour. Um, it wasn't, there wasn't a wait at all. Um, but the issue was I needed the, to get a permit. You have to get a permit for yourself, a personal permit, plus a permit for your car to stay there for six months. So, I have done so successfully. Now, turn left. And uh, we're just looking for a hotel now to stay the night in a comfortable uh, bed instead of sleeping on the ground again. So, we'll find a hotel here. Stay for one night. <laughs> it has a garage. Yeah, what do you think, guys? I think this is maybe uh, the rent by the hour room. Look at that sexy chair. <laughs> Alright, I don't know about that. Can we have fireplace? Or is there, I don't know. <laughs> a mirror. Okay, yeah. It's a sex hotel. For sure. <laughs> I get the room. No. Oh, God. <laughs> I hope you don't judge me by my accommodations that night in Akuna. I just wanted to make Chance more comfortable. We didn't waste any time getting on the road the next day.
one of their dogs. Tempe, are you coming? Come. Come. He has to go now. Are you going to stay here? We made our way through Mexico towards San Buena, where we came upon one of many fresh fruit stands. I purchased a kilo of grapes and a kilo of lychees for 120 pesos, which comes to about $10 Canadian. They were really delicious. It was 34 degrees Celsius outside, so we stopped to fuel up and had a bite to eat at Ed Gordita's food truck. This one was operated by Lucy and Cesar. They recommended that we travel to Aqua Calientes instead of Durango for safety reasons. Alfred also mentioned this to me. So I decided to heed the directions from the locals.
The biggest challenge about driving in Mexico was learning how to pass. Their lanes are one and a half lanes wide and I quickly learned to stay far to the right to allow others to pass. Fueling up in Rio Grande, I found a dirt trail along the road. Since the next designated backcountry site was over 70 kilometers away and it was getting late after 8 p.m., I decided to pitch the tent and hunker down for the night. We were soon discovered by the ranch owner Suzette and her family, who, with the help of an interpreter friend in Texas over the phone, invited me to stay in their yard instead. They were concerned for my safety. They said it was unsafe for me to stay where I was. It was Suzette's mother's Rosemary's birthday the next day, and they invited me in for tacos that evening. Morning, we got to help with the chores at Rancho Los Culetas. A huge thank you and shout out, I want to say, for Suzette, Yamina, Peter, Rosemary, Mary, and Betsy, and all the dogs and cats on the ranch. Suzette uses all the milk her cows produce to make queso and natural yogurt. On my way back to Canada, they requested that I stop in again for a longer stay.
We have a drive ahead of us. It's a 10 hour drive to Puerto Vallarta. Uh, so it's 10 20. No, a little bit. No, it's 9 20 because the hour changed. My clock hasn't changed yet on my car. Uh, so it's 9 20. So I got up at 5 30, Puerto Vallarta time. It's going to be a long day. The angels are watching over me.
after just one more toll booth, we finally arrived at our destination at 9.59 p.m. We covered over 4,350 kilometers in total. Here's a tour of our place. We hope you like this video. If you do, comment, like, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.